Lord's my shepherd I lack in nothing He makes me lie down In pastures of green He leads me onward By whispering waters He restores my soul and guides me for the sake of his name Though I should journey Through this dark valley land I will know there is no need to fear I am protected By the staff in your hand and I'm comforted just knowing that you're near. The Lord's my shepherd. I lack in nothing. He makes me lie down in that. He leads me onwards by whispering waters. He restores my soul and guides me for the sake of his name. There's a there's another song, it's a short song, but I wanted to share this. I met a pastor's wife one day, and it was at a women's conference. And she was hurting very badly because her son was on drugs. And she was up there speaking, and she sang a song. And I'll tell you, I remembered, the part that I remembered of the song struck my heart. And I would like to sing that song right now. And in between, I have a verse that I would like to give. I stand in awe of you, creator of the universe. I stand in awe of you, maker of heaven and earth. I will declare your works, and of your splendor I will forever speak. I stand in awe of you, Jesus Christ, my King. I stand in awe of you, creator of the I stand in awe of you, maker of heaven and earth. I will declare your works, and of your splendor I will forever speak. I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you, Jesus Christ, my King. I know that many have gone through fear. Many have gone through the toils and stairs, and we've all been affected by everything that's coming our way. But we serve a living God, and He knows as He made us, and He knew we were going to be born in this hour. And he would say unto us, be strong and of good courage, because I have overcome the world. And he has. He has. Those that have gone on to be with the Lord, it was time for them. But right now, we're looking at so many things. And one of the things I'm seeing more than anything at all is I see so many people that don't know the Lord. So many people are wondering and fearful what's happening, what's going to happen to them. It's the ones that know Christ. 
I didn't know Christ till the age of 25. And I didn't know that God could fill me with his spirit and change my life. A lot of these people don't know that their lives can change unless somebody tells them. We are the ones, the ones from the church, the ones that have been touched by God, the ones that have been filled with the spirit of God, the ones that have a heart for souls. They're crying out right now. Young people, they're wondering what's going on and we're not going to be able to live to be 20, 21, 40. But we have the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our hearts. It's time for us to go out. It's time for us not to waste it. We have our salvation. We know that we do. But we also have a lot of people that don't. And Lord, I just want to thank you right now. I want to thank you and I want to praise your holy name, Lord God. That Lord, you said in your word, come unto me, all you that are heavy burdened and laden, and I will give you rest. Lord, it's your promise, Lord God, that we would have a life eternal with you. And that's what we desire, Lord God, to walk in your, in your steps, Lord God. To be called, Lord God, others unto you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I stand in awe of you. Creator of the universe, I stand in awe of you, maker of heaven and earth. I will declare your works, and of your splendor I will forever speak. I stand in all of you, I stand in all of you, I stand in all of you, Jesus Christ, my King. It says blessings of the faithful, and it's only a few scriptures. Verse 3. The Spirit of the Lord of God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. As I mentioned earlier, in, uh, when, on Wednesday night, Brother Eugene, he came to minister in song and his theme, I mean in prayer, and his theme was, was on deception. And I don't know exactly how he'll present that today, but I would say he that has an ear, or she that has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit says today through our brother. Will you welcome Eugene again to the platform today? Well, good morning, church. Um, good morning. I want to thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. I really cherish sharing the scriptures as the Spirit helps me. Um, I'm ordinarily, I've told the church, and I'm not hiding it. Before I was called to become a Christian, I was not a wise person. Okay. <laughs> I was not a wise person, and so I owe whatever little wisdom I may have Currently, I owe it to God. Amen. Whatever I, little it is. I know I still have a long way to go, but even what I have now, I completely owe to the Lord. I will be reading a bunch of uh, places from the scriptures, and I will speak a little. Um, but what I really prefer today is that the Holy Spirit speak to all of us. That's what I prefer, and I believe he will. 
And the first place I'll be reading will be from Matthew chapter 24. Um, in preparation for this, I read a lot of places. So I do not have any... Um, I, I am convinced I will not be touching a lot of them this morning. But whichever part we touch, I want you to allow God to minister to you through it. So Matthew chapter 24, and at your time, you could read all the way from 1 to 25, and it will tell you a lot of things. Most of what has been said before I go here is in line with what I'm going to talk about. So, you know, it, it's not completely strange or new, and you, I am sure you will enjoy it. Some of them may be pro thought-provoking also, so I need to warn you about that. Matthew chapter 24, 1 to 25, and I will read verse 4, 5, 10 to 13, 22 to 25. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. Verse 10, at that time, many will turn away from the faith, and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. Our Father and our God, we thank you because your word is true. And we thank you because you're watching over your words to perform them. We thank you because you love us, and that was why you came down and paid the price we owed. And dearly, you paid with your life. But we thank you for raising Jesus Christ from the dead, O oh God. And Lord Jesus, we thank you because you intercede for us even as we call on you this morning. Speak to us today, we plead with you. Minister to us, Holy Spirit. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. See, I have told you ahead of time. Now this is the word of Jesus Christ. If you have your Bible and you go to Matthew 24, he spoke at length concerning the end time and the things you are, we are to expect that will happen at the end times. I have been following the United States of America politics for a while now. And the whole world has always followed the politics of the United States of America. Because if you don't, you will regret it. That's just the truth. The United States of America has been the beacon of hope for all that seek freedom and liberty. And they have largely lived up to the expectation of most of us who we are not born in this country. However, I must confess that the politics in the United States of America today is as divided, as divisive as it has ever been for a long time in my own, through the lens that I, I look at it. And I've been following this politics since George W. Bush very intently. I was a little bit aware of what is happening, but I was not that interested when 
uh, George H.W. Bush was the president. But from George W. Bush, I've been following very intently. And, and the politics here is very divided. There's a lot of division. There's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of misunderstanding. There's a lot of discord out there, more than it has been in a long time. However, I'm not here to preach Republican or, or Democratic politics to anybody this morning. I'm here to point out a serious, serious underlying issue that some of us may not be paying close attention to. And that serious issue is that the devil has not been happy that the United States have been sending people to preach Jesus and have been defending those that call upon the name of Jesus and have helped Israel to stand as their own nation. There's a lot of reasons, but the devil is not happy. So, you know, you could fight all you want because you're a Republican and you need to really, you know, hit these Democrats hard and knock them out of the way and all that. But if you're a Christian, there is a bigger fight than that, unfortunately. And if you don't recognize that fight, you will lose miserably in this whole saga that is going on. You will lose miserably. Hear me out. You will lose miserably. And at the end of it, you'll be asking yourself, what have I just done? Or what did I buy into? Now, most of us know the deceiver. Maybe some of us have forgotten who he is. Do we all know the deceiver? Amen. The Bible said in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and, the ang and his angels were cast out with him. So we have a more serious enemy than the Democrat or the Republican, yeah. and his name is the devil. Yeah. And as a Christian, if you don't understand that, you just might be hitting your brother or your sister hard unnecessarily. And at the end of it all, you'll be asking yourself, what did I just do? And I, I, I cannot tell you how many families have been fractured because of the current politics that is going on currently. Needlessly. I must tell you, it, it's needless. Yeah. We do not need to be Republicans or Democrats. Hear me out, church. You don't need to be a Democrat or a Republican at this time, T, in your work as a Christian. Why? Because God is neither. God is not a Republican and God is not a Democrat. God is God. And you better be on his side. Because your side will not accommodate him. He is too big for your side. Amen. Okay? Amen. So we need to get that. God is too big for our side. He is on my side. Which side? How big is your side? God is God and he is God on his side. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He doesn't need to be on your side or anybody's side for that matter. If we as Christians get that, then we will be able to listen more to the Spirit of God and walk in the, in the way of the Spirit of God more. And we do need to, because the Bible said that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And if you don't know that there is a thief behind some of these things, you will just be beating the air. And Paul said, I, I, don't, I don't want to fight like someone beating the air. He said, I pummel my body to bring it under, sub, to subject it, to subdue it. Because 
guess what? This is not a good time for us to be partisan. And that is, a, that is an advice from the Lord. This is not a good time for it. Am I saying you should not vote Republican or Democrat if you want? No, I am not saying that. That's not my business. That's your business. But what I am saying is that as a Christian, you must look beyond what is happening outward. Because beyond all that is the devil. And if you don't get that, then you'll be fighting the wrong people. That's what I'm saying. And that's what God needs us to understand. If you don't take anything away this morning, take that away. Don't fight your brother or sister. They may not be your problem. Or they are not your problem. Your problem is the devil. And that's the truth. And I'm sure he doesn't want me to tell you this this morning. But God wants you to hear it anyway. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter, uh, uh, chapter 3. I will read 1 to 5, and then I will read 17. The Bible said, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of money. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. Are we seeing this kind of people? A man has two sons. And he was a well-to-do man. He invited them. They were grown. Invited them to his house. Prepared a large table, precious food, all kinds of good food and everything. And then also he had a bunch of magazines there. Some were pornographic magazines, some were regular magazines, some were political affairs and all kinds of magazines. And he had bunches of money. He had a gun, he had a Bible, and all that spread out in a very long, large family table. And he had his camera on this table, he invited his sons, and they came in. But he was not there. He left a note for them and said he, something came up urgently and he had to leave. They should enjoy themselves. Hopefully he will meet them when he comes back. If he doesn't, that loves you all. And he went back and started watching what they would do. The first one came in, you know, got his first meal the best meal he likes and everything, sat down, enjoyed it, put on the TV, was watching and, you know, taking his time, relaxed. This is their house, you know, like father's house and everything and, you know. The next one came in, ate a little food. He didn't eat much. He was watching his weight, you know. Then drank a little wine grab some cash, put it inside a Bible, grab a pornographic magazine, put it under his armpit, took the gun, tucked it away, and walked right out. And his father shook his head. He said, that one is going to be a politician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up, there was this Western movie that we watched that we liked a lot. It was called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. But those of you who are in your 50s, it was very popular in those days. You know, and uh, I don't remember the name of the characters in them. Okay, but, uh, you know, politicians are a combination of the three. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And I don't care which party they are coming from. Every single one of them I am glad I am not a card carry member of any of them, and I'm glad I'm not your pastor so that nobody will say the pastor said this. You know, the politicians is a combination of the good, the bad, and the ugly all in one. Don't trust them. The Bible said, Woe to him that trusts in the arm of the flesh. 
they go to this group and they tell you what you want to hear. You know? How can they be supporting Planned Parenthood and killing babies? Yeah, that's very grievous. Then they go to the next party, the next people, and they say, we are all for you. You know, you can live your life how you want. The same person. And he's talking to gays and lesbians. And then he goes to the next place, and then these are a group of business people who will give you tax breaks. And then he takes money from the poor and he gives it to the rich. It's all messed up. The Bible says that we we'll have the spirit of sound-mindedness. If you have sound mind and you look at the whole spectrum, not just from one narrow point of view, but the whole spectrum, it stinks. Politics stinks. But do, you, but do you want to know the truth? These people here, these politicians here, are saints compared to those in, in Nigeria where I was born. You know what a saint is? Like a Catholic saint. You know, like somebody that devoted his life to good. You know, and God performed miracles through him. Donald Trump and Joe Biden and Barack Obama are saints when you compare them to the kind of politicians we have there. And then also in Central America, in South America, you know, I don't know if some of you have heard about a man called Maduro, Nicolas Maduro. You know, half of his country is destroyed but he still wants to cling to power. You know, it was so bad in, in, in Rwanda, it, it, one, one tribe wanted to finish the rest. They called them cockroaches. And these are all black people like me. What's the difference? A black man kills a black man, a white man kills a black man, a, a black man or a white man. What is the difference? Killing is killing. It's as simple as that. So you could, you could justify it all you want and you could match all you want, but the fact is if you don't recognize that the enemy is behind the bush playing the drum of all this wickedness, you will not get it because you will be deceived. And so God doesn't want us to be deceived. Do not be deceived. When you see these things happening, pray and ask God for a leading, for the leading of the Spirit of God. Because the Bible says that they that are led by the Spirit of God are truly the sons of God. And if you don't have his Spirit, you are none of his. Because it's with that Spirit that we have been sealed. Having the form of godliness, but denying the power of it. The Republican Party is filled, about 50% of all the registered Republicans have a form of godliness, but deny the power of it. Amen. And I am being very conservative in, in the 50% I'm saying, because it might be even much more than that. That is sad. You know? And when all goes down, the evangelicals, they will point at the evangelicals and say, the evangelicals are the problem. They supported these people, and they did this and that, and the next one. And, and the name of God is dragged into the mud for nothing. In vain. Because who gains from all these things? The big guy is up there. I have worked in this country for a while now, and every single time, my tax has never gone down. Okay, the, this, the, the Democrats come, my tax has not gone down. The, the Republicans come, my tax has not gone down either. That's, that's just it. The middle class is the playing ground. That's where they collect the money from. They give, either give it to the rich or they give it to the very poor who cannot afford or who claim they cannot afford. Because there's a lot of liars. <laughs> so... It's neither here nor there. If you don't depend on God, you'll be carried away. You'll be deceived. And God knows that. And Jesus knew it. So he warned us ahead of time. Do not be deceived. Don't be deceived. 
so that when you pray, then you can pray properly. And then you can call upon God knowing the real issues. Because many a times with politicians, the issue is not the issue. What is the intent of their hearts? Because God sees the intent. This movement that I have just started, what is the intent? There was an exhaustive two-year investigation about Russia meddling into the United States politics. You know, and some groups say it's not true. The other groups say it's true. And it's not only Russia that is meddling in the United States politics. It's everybody that knows how to use the internet to their advantage. They want to sow discord in this country. They want to divide everybody in this country into a million and two groups so that the country and the nation will fall. Hear me, Americans. You don't want to give over your nation to foreign influences. In case, so for some of you who are young, America has been very instrumental to this, defeating the works of evil. They defeated communism. And it was not a small fight. It was called Cold War. And communism was overthrown. And a lot of the countries in the Asian region got free from Russia. They, defeat, they, they helped win World War I and World War II. What was World War II all about? There was a crazy man known as Hitler, Adolf Hitler. And he wanted to overtake and rule all the world. But not for good. Because he was full of hate. Because America was dragged into that war, victory was won by the so-called allied forces. We know that there is, that alliance is not really as solid as it, it sounds, you know, when you hear allied forces. It was, it was actually American power, yes. firepower that won World War II. Because when those bombs were dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, everybody knew it was over. Because guess what? Germany knew, as stupid as they may have been to have allowed Hitler to lead them to that, to, to that hate, level of hate, they knew that if one of those is dropped, they, it's over for them. And they didn't want it to be dropped in the, on, on Germany. They didn't want the atomic bomb to be dropped there. That was why it ended. It wasn't because they were weakening the more. They were actually going ahead, ahead, and conquering a lot of places. It was because they saw what that weapon could do, and they didn't have an answer for it. They gave up. That was it. So America has been a, a force of good. And the devil doesn't like a force of good, you know. It's the same thing with what you've been doing. You've been praying for your family. You've been fasting. You've been calling on God consistently for people to be saved to be set free from bondage. So what does the devil do? He wants to bring things into you that will defile you and make your prayer unanswerable to, before God. He wants to make you partisan and start make, ha, make you have hate or start fighting people you shouldn't fight. And when you start fighting people, you can't pray for them. Forget it. You could stand all you want and call on God all you want if you don't have love within you concerning whom you are calling upon, God is not going to listen. That's not how it works. And the devil knows it. So he starts by sowing discord with, within. He starts by sowing those, those discord seeds so that when they start growing, they start choking up your devotion and your dedication to God and your, the purity of your heart. And we don't want to have that happen. You don't want to continue to entertain that. It's enough. Honestly, it's enough. The government has been saying, don't do this, don't do that, don't do the next one. Let me ask you a question I've been asking myself. If I was filled with the Holy Spirit, like Peter and John in their day, who came to the gate called Beautiful and looking at a man that was born lame, 
told him, silver or gold, we do not have, but what we have we'll give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the man walked. If they bring all the people that have coronavirus to the church and they all get healed, do you think the church they, they will be asked to close? No. I'm just asking. You think the church will be asked to close? No. They will ask the, all the churches to open and they will bring people. The EMTs, and they will bring people to the church instead of taking them to the hospital. I am telling you, people will go to the hospital and grab their relatives out of the yard, the, 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 the wards, by fire or by force, and bring them to church. So I am challenging us to seek God earnestly. Because if we become like the world where there is no power to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the world will treat us like they treat everybody else in the world. And you could be annoyed all you want. You could be offended all you want. But the fact is you have nothing to offer that makes a difference. And when you don't have anything to offer, then, you know, they will treat you like everybody else. Am I saying they will love us if this start happening? Not really. Some will be very angry that the hospitals are losing patients. I could tell you that. Because Jesus was healing people, and what happened? They still had to kill him. I mean, who in his right mind would kill someone that has healed every sick person that was brought before him? Who in their right mind would do that? But that's what the devil does. He will cause people not to be in their right minds. But at least if you have the power and you could go and pray for people and they get healed, then in the first place, you yourself will not be afraid because you know that God heals. But how many Christians are afraid and they don't even want to show up to church because they don't want to die? The Apostle Paul says, to die is gain. It's greater gain for me. The only reason why I want to live is because I think that you all need me. Other than that, I want to be with Christ. And that's the same Christianity we are talking about. That's the same God we are talking about. That's the same Christ we are talking about, church. We need to get closer to God. We need to reject the devil and all his ploys and plots to, to rope us into hating each other and fighting with each other. Because we don't need that. The, the, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, he says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning. For there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. That's the Bible talking to the Corinthian Christians. It says, do, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get us you know, into all kinds of groups, and then you know, we start singing tunes that we, people who have, who have evil intents start, are drumming. Don't sing anyone's tune. Sing Jesus' tune. Don't look at unto any man. Look at unto Jesus. That's, that's where our gaze should be. Am I saying we should be removed from the world so we are not, part of, not a part of it? No. But I am saying we must not live like the world does. God doesn't want us to live that way. Because the Bible says, though we are in the world, we are not of, of the world. That's what I'm saying. That's what the Spirit of God is telling Christians and telling me this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 to 13, and I will only read 11 and 12 because of time. The Bible said, these things happen to them as examples, and we are written down as warnings for us, on whom the accumulation of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. He that thinks that he standeth should be careful so he does not fall. You think you're standing? Thank God for you. But be careful so you don't fall. Amen. 
like Pastor said this morning, like Brother Rick shared, like everybody has been saying, Jesus is coming soon. You don't want to be caught napping. You don't want to be caught. The, the Apostle Paul says, the, the Bible says that those that put their hands on the plow and look back are not worthy. You can't do that. And these things are not easy. Christian life is not easy like some people want to make it seem. You know, you just have to believe God and you just have to walk a certain way. You just have to sing a certain way and stuff like that and all is well. That's not true. We will have challenges in this world. If you don't have any challenge as a Christian, you are not standing. I'm sorry to inform you, but you are not standing as a Christian. We will have challenges. Challenges within and challenges without. How many of us know that a battle is, is more within than without? I battled high, high blood pressure last year like you would never believe. And most of the time, I lost miserably. And at some point, I was on five medications. But one day, because of all your prayers and because of the revelations that God gave to some of you to give me, I did something. I trusted God with my life. I said, God, if I am dying, it's because it's my time. And it's because you have a better arrangement for my kids and my wife. Let your will be done. And everything changed. Because that was my problem. My problem was I think I could handle my health and I have my life and I could take care of me. That's what I thought. I could take care of me. After all, I'm a pharmacist. I know. How many of you know that the more educated you are, the easier it becomes to deceive you. That, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. The more educated people are, the easier the enemy is able to deceive them. And that's why we have a lot of professors and a lot of doctors and PhD holders singing all kinds of crazy tunes out there and, and drumming it into the ear of anyone that, 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 that pays attention. And they, 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 sh they have their certificates to show for it. Deception of the enemy. Deception. That's why Jesus didn't bother going into, into the temple to, in temple courts to pick his followers. He went to the riverside. He picked men that smelled fishy. He picked people that, you know, didn't care about this life. As much as those that are in the temple cause with their robes and everything who want, walk sanctimoniously, they trusted God and everything, they were holy. He didn't bother about those people. He went to the riverside. He picked fish, fishermen. How many of you know that fish stinks? <laughs> and can you imagine when you are the one catching them? Fresh. I lived in Belize for nine years. If you need fish, you go to the riverside. And buy fresh snappers, fresh snappers from the Caribbean Sea. Yum. But it stinks until you cook it. <laughs> and fishermen stink <laughs> until they go home and take their bath. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, 7 to 10. And I'll read only 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Sow to the spirit. Sow to the spirit. Don't sow to the flesh. Worldly politics is, is about the flesh. It's about who becomes popular and who is not popular, who has a following and who doesn't have a following, and who, win, who won the election and who didn't win the election, and who is ruling where, and who is his excellency and her excellency and his majesty and all that nonsense. 
all that is passing away. All that passes away. But like Pastor said this morning, whether you live 90 years or 100 years, it's not comparable to eternity. It's just a drop in the bucket. What are you going to do with your eternity? Be foolish, let down your guard, and lose your soul, or be wise and sow in the kingdom? First Corinthians chapter 1, 18 to 31, and I'll only read 26. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. Oh, that describes me. I don't know about you, but that describes me. And I said it, this, uh, I said it earlier. I was not a wise person. You know, when I came to know Christ, I was not influential, I was not of noble birth, nothing of that. But today I could tell you, God has used me to bless my family abundantly. And he's continuing to use me. Not because of anything else, but because of his messes. Through his messes and steadfast love, God lifted me up from the dungeon of stupidity and foolishness and he stood me on the solid rock Jesus Christ and he continues to wash me clean. Church, I, have, I do not count myself as having attained yet but I'm telling you day by day he renews my mind. Day by day he helps me. I love all of you and I am serious. And I thank God for this church that gives opportunity to people like me to talk to us about Christ, to share the little we know about Christ. And for a pastor like ours. And for all that you've been doing. Very soon, by the special grace of God, a well will be dug in my, in my town because of this church. Because of your love. Not many are like that. There are millionaires who have not given anybody any dime. One of them, is, his name is Donald Trump. He doesn't give. And he's not alone. There are so many of them, they are stingy. They keep almost everything they have. And that's their right. You need to know that. I'm not saying they must do it. That is their right. But some have chosen to share what God has blessed them with. Some have chosen to bless others. And guess what? There is a blessing for that. There is a blessing for blessing other people who are less fortunate than we are. And this church have chosen that part. You've built a church in India. You've dug another well before the, the one that they were digging in my village, in, 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 in Brother Greg's village. This church have given to, to missions. There are a lot of pictures back there. There are some churches that are richer than you that have not done half of what you've done. Because you love Jesus. And God doesn't want you to be deceived and carried away captive by the devil because he's, the devil is out there fighting because his time is short. He knows it and we don't. And we need to know that his time is short and Jesus will soon be here. And that it's our responsibility to share and spread the love. Like Sister Becky advised us this morning to share Jesus. You might be the, the last person or the person that needs to talk to that young man, that young woman, so that they could change their lives. You never know. Just sow the seed. Finally, I want to read a place from First Chronicles chapter 21, and I will read verse 1 and 2. The Bible said in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, 1 and 2, Satan stood up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Then report back to me so that I may know how many there, there, many there are. Now God told them not to do that. If you think you are smart, and if you think you know all you need to know, think again. We are no match to the devil. 
if not for the grace and the glory of God, if not for the hand of God and the spirit of God, we are no match to the enemy. That's why it was not difficult for him to overcome Eve in the garden. You might think that that woman was very careless. That's all of us. All of us are like that if God doesn't help us. That's the truth. So, look unto God. Don't look unto any man. And don't allow the enemy to deceive you. Human beings are prone to deception. God made us. He loves us. And he has warned us that we should not be deceived. The Bible is your best guide to staying sane and not be deceived in this era. The deceiver of the world is the devil. Don't forget, not your brother, not your sister, not the Democrat, not the Republican. The deceiver of the world is Satan. Without God's help, you will fail miserably, and you will be deceived and taken away captive. So ask God for help. Deception is extremely subtle. You might think it's all right, but it's not. Until you are deep into it, deception is very subtle. If you are led by the Spirit of God, you will not easily be deceived because you will see through the plots of the devil and you will refuse to yield to the enemy. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Eugene. Powerful message today. What should our response be? What should our response be? We should take a moment to do self-examination. Look at our own hearts. See within. I agree completely with what Brother Eugene said about the war within. Your main struggles are not out here, it's in here. It's in here. And the very illustration that Eugene closed with was David numbering Israel. David, his victory rested with the Lord. He didn't need to know how many men he had. He didn't need to know how big his army was because God proved and demonstrated before there was a David, there was a, there was a man that was called Gideon and he had a large army. And the Lord said, you got too many, too many, too many until he weeded them down to 300 that defeated thousands upon thousands because you see, the Lord is the one that accomplishes the victory. And so that's why it's important for us to look within and surrender our hearts, our lives to the Lord. And to live as he instructs us according to his word. Father, today we have heard the word of God. Eugene began, the very beginning was, I say this to you. This is Jesus speaking. I say this to you. You are the supreme authority. And may we hear what you have said to us today through your servant Eugene. May we hear the voice of the Spirit. May we consult with the Word of God that we may not be deceived. For Lord, we know as adults, that there's been deceivers in every party, whether it be Republican, Democrat, Independent, Conservative, whatever party it may be, because men are fallen creatures and many serve for their own gain. Oh, Lord, we must be careful and we must be aware of what you say. Because as Eugene properly pointed out today, the devil has but a short time. He knows that his, his end is at hand. And he's going about like a roaring lion, lion seeking to devour through deception whoever he may. But Lord, our eyes have been opened today 
you have called us back again to the word of God and to the Holy Spirit that would guide us. Lord, help us to review our own lives today. Lord, there are things that we might be doing that you disapprove of and we've okayed. It's not okay. It's not okay. Help us, Lord, as we've quoted earlier today, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. Lord, if we turn from our wicked ways, may we realize there are things that we've condoned in our lives that are wicked you do not approve of. Let us turn away from them, live righteously, be ready for your coming. I pray for young parents, Lord, that have children. May every parent live righteous before you, not because they need to do something or be told, but because their children are watching. They are beholding them. They are establishing the lifestyle to live. Father, I remember so many times when my own parents did not live up to your word. And it so discouraged me. I didn't ever want to be a Christian because of their conduct. Help us, Lord, to live right before you. Father, now we pray that you will give wisdom to every family member. God, that you will help us to receive the word of God today and not be deceived. Lord, I love what Eugene said. If we don't have love in our hearts for our enemy, God will not hear our prayers for them. Oh, Lord, help us to begin to love the lost. Lord, one of my own, one of my own colleagues Posted, damn them to hell, damn them to hell, damn them to hell. Lord, those that broke in upon a church and used such profanity, vile, vile profanity, and blasphemed you. As I responded to that young man and said, oh, brother, they don't know any better. Jesus from the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Help us, Lord, to forgive. And as I instructed this young man, pray for them. Pray, pray. And Lord, as Eugene said, if we have hate in our heart, you won't even hear that prayer. So help us, Lord, to live righteous and to be filled with the Spirit and to have your love that motivates us and guides us, it's that it may be true love and not a faked or forced love. Lord, you love this congregation. You love these that are gathered here today. May we receive the word of God. May we repent of any wickedness and turn from those ways and begin to live for you in a way that honors you and glorifies you. Bless every father, every mother, as they lead their children in the ways of the Lord. May these righteous mothers, their children, rise up and call their mother blessed as the wise woman of Proverbs 31. Blessed is this mother that is wise that leads her children in the ways of the Lord. Every father that provides guidance and instruction in the ways of the Lord. Bless them. Father, bless each child as they love their parents. Help them, Lord, to live in a way that will honor you. And now, Lord, we pray as we close, as my God, the truth that was preached today, how can anyone avoid the house of God that believes in divine healing and miracles and wonders and yet can't come to the church because they're afraid? Oh, God, help us. Help us to see through that deception. Oh, Lord, we love you today. We ask you, Lord, as we look to you to accomplish your purpose and will. Father, we look for freedom. We still look for freedom to be the church and to do all that we can so that we're not driven underground. Let us be the church, we pray. And now, Father, I pray that you'll bless every home, every family, 
and in particular bless Eugene as he has preached your word today without fear or favor. Let him rest in peace this day, knowing that he's proclaimed your word.